We now have a healthy game loop, but there's not much going on, there's, there's no animation. So we're going to add a background, and we're also going to add a simple clock face. Just a circle with another circle zooming around it. And how that's created isn't too important, it's the effect of the frame rate on the animation, and uh, I'll show you the code, and you can substitute your own motion, but it's mainly there to show you what happens when we increase and decrease the frame rate. If you open up your Activity Game Loop Layout Java, we'll scroll through. And I've already added the code and I've commented it out, and we're just going to uncomment it as we go along. So to start with the background, we're going to need to hold our background image and bitmap. So we need to type that out. We'll also need a canvas. Just import that. And we're going to put our bitmap resource in our bitmap background check. And we need to import the bitmap factory. This is all, this should all be very familiar to you. And we'll scroll down to our draw function and we'll lock the canvas draw our background image onto the canvas and unlock the canvas and post now if we hit save and run we'll launch our game loop and there's our background and we'll add our clock face if you go back into your code First thing we're going to do is reuse some methods from previous tutorials so you can cut and paste them here paint brushes we're going to need paint brushes. Cut and paste this entire method from the draw tutorial. Follow, here we're going, we're being told we need to import paint, so we'll need to import our paint classes. Same with color. And we're going to have to define these variables. So if we scroll back up to the top, I don't have them. So let me just go back into, I think it was animation activity 001 layout. Here are our paint brushes. The next method we're going to be we're using is our density pixel calculator. We'll, we'll need to make use this to make sure that our drawings are the same on all devices. So it uh, takes in density pixels and returns the number of pixels for the local device. So I think we can start drawing. We're going to need coordinates. You need one for the X and Y. And since we're going to have some rotation, we're going to need an angle. And uh, how I've done this isn't too important. It's the um, effect of the frame rate on an animation. So if you just copy the maths, we'll go through and find out what happens when we increase and decrease our frame rate. This will be applied to your own animations. So we have theta, theta per seconds. Those are up here as doubles. And inside our run loop, we'll need to prepare our paint brushes. We don't need to do anything else inside this uh, run while loop. We can go straight down to our update method. And then here I've done the maths behind clock face. I'll just leave this up for a moment so you can copy it. It's just a bit of geometry. And under our draw method, we start drawing our circles and clock faces. And that is it. So we'll uh, hit save. There's an error somewhere. Oh, it's out. It's the errors up here at the top. I forgot to put a semicolon at the end of our angle measurements. So we're ready to hit save and run. But let's just confirm the frame rate. We've got 15 frames a second. And this is the animation I've created. And uh, you can see it's a red dot following a larger circle. And this is at 15 frames a second. Now um, I'm going to take it down to 5 frames a second. All of the maths trickles through all of these variables. So we can just hit save and run. It's quite jerky. It's not, not too smooth. But you can see that it still obeys the physics. So the red dot is where it's meant to be at a certain point in time. Let's take it down to one frame a second. Now at one frame a second, the physics still works. The red dot is still at the points on the large blue circle where it's meant to be at certain points in time. But the frames in between are missing, so it looks really jerky. And in terms of visual feedback for gameplay, this is horrible. So what you can do with this healthy game loop we've created is play around with the frames per second until you find something that matches your gameplay. I'm going to move the frame rate up to 30 frames a second now. At 30 frames a second, it's, it's quite smooth. And uh, just as that animation started, you might have noticed that red dot vibrate a little. We're getting some effects coming in that uh, can be a bit problematic for you. 
and I'm going to exaggerate that by whacking up the frame rate to 60 frames a second. Now, at 60 frames a second, uh, our red dot has decided to go backwards. Um, the behavior's completely changed. How can that be? Well, do you remember we had the negative delta problem and that whenever uh, we called the sleep function our app errored out? Well, we're not handling that at the moment. If we look at our loop, this is our delta t calculation. And because our required frame rate is so small, the Android app is interrupting and the distance between the last frame and the end of render has become so large that the calculation of our delta t has become negative. And so when you have a negative delta t, you may be ignoring it in your sleep function, but in your physics calculations, you're having real physical effects, distortions. And you have to handle this. Instead of, uh, at the moment, the calculation with a negative delta deletes x and y coordinates, you need to add the extended frame time onto your loop. And this snippet of code does that. And I put a log for every time that the uh, negative delta t is used. And all this does is detect if delta t is less than zero. It takes your initial required frame time, uh, time frame and two negatives adds the extra frozen time onto your frame so that your animation can catch up. So it means your frames are gonna vary around your required frame time, but it should smooth out your animation. And let's see what that looks like. And here it is at 60 frames a second, or at least our target frame rate of 60 frames a second. We have a very well-behaved animation. And it's very smooth. Now, if you are making a simple game, chess, scrabble, any of these things with the minimal movement, then that's it. This is the game loop you need to use. If you want anything more advanced, we're going to start doing that in the next few tutorials. Thanks for watching.